Hi everybody, Princess Rainy Cloud here and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you all here. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to you as well. Um, my channel is all about out of the ordinary subjects that also have a lot to do with experiences that I have had in my life that I want to share with you but I'm also very interested in your experiences so as a new content creator I want to make videos that you find interesting because without my audience I mean there is really no point in making these videos so I want to have fun but I also want you to enjoy them as well so today let's get going on this um, I am going to be talking about a subject that I have covered in a previous video and that is Bigfoot a creature that people are reporting seeing all across the globe so it is a very interesting subject to me my experience that I had um, while camping in Big Basin State Park that was the first time I ever had a, a, a personal experience prior to that I always thought it was really interesting but one of the things that really caught my eye was a clip that a guy had posted called the Pennsylvania white Sasquatch when I saw that clip on YouTube I was fascinated and it's really become quite an iconic um, video but there's so many different opinions on it as to whether it's real whether it's somebody in a mask but what really gripped me about that is the the way it moved and the the facial expression how it winced as it like kind of ducked and ran there are the really interesting um, researchers that are putting their videos out there and then there's the the opposite end that it's just garbage it's become a joke of a subject and no wonder scientists don't want to get involved with it I mean I really can't blame them but it is an important subject and that is why I want to um, continue to make these videos about this because in my last video about my experience in Big Basin State Park I only touched on the experience that I had that night but I was actually withholding a lot of information at that time um, out of fear, trying to decide if I really wanted to go there. And um, I had a really, really encouraging comment left. They said that they had heard a lot of different encounters and there was something about mine that really rang true for them. And that made me feel so good because it was true. It really happened. And when you're delving into a subject such as this or anything that is really out of the ordinary or even, you know, some of the situations that are considered paranormal, uh, people always go to, even though they like watching these videos and they're intrigued by them, um, it's like a knee-jerk reaction for people to automatically call you a liar. I mean, people they have so many different opinions and when you're in the court of public opinion, it can be very damaging to you. I mean, even Roger Patterson went to his grave being called a liar, but he stuck to his guns and insisted that, no, this footage is real. I'm honestly amazed by that footage because what he has captured with that type of a camera. I've heard people comment, why hasn't anyone taken a, a clear picture of one of these things? Or everyone has a camera on their phone these days, but it is not so easy to get a good photo of these creatures. The first two years that I lived here, I would go for hikes or walks, but I never encountered anything. I was hoping that I would, but I never did. I would scan the tree lines and never saw a single thing. In fact, the only thing during those first two years that ever happened to me 
was having a rock thrown at me and that was really that was so bizarre i we have a lot of uh, natural water springs here there's actually several places where you can go and get your own spring water and one of my favorite places to go is kind of in the woods and um, by a mountain and normally there was a lot of people there so when i would go to get water i'd always time it so i wasn't there by myself because it was a little bit unnerving um and then this one time i went and it was only like me and another lady standing there filling our water and she was almost done i still had a couple of bottles to go what happened to me and this is the only other thing that had happened to me in those two years before i moved to where i'm at now but um she fill, she puts her water in the car so as she drove out of my line of sight um, and I was there by myself, it was almost like the second that her car passed that point and she was no longer visible, something through a rock. And I could hear it because there's where the water is, where you fill the filling station for the water, there's like a brick wall. And then on the other side of that brick wall is like the mountain and you know it's just tree line and something threw a rock and it land I heard it land poof, right there and I was just like what was that so and I knew it was something I mean it wasn't an acorn I mean it was like a boom thud and I thought and it, but it was like right there and so I just quickly peered over the wall because it's like right about you know chin level and I saw it looked like it was a big kind of flat rock. It wasn't a brick, but it was almost brick shaped because it was flat on both sides, but it was almost like a, nat I, I guess I could almost only describe it as a natural brick. And I remember thinking, oh my God. <laughs> so I filled up my water really fast and I left. And um, I had been back a couple times since that time. And I remember that the next time I went, I immediately looked over that wall to see if that rock was there and it wasn't there anymore. But then oddly, the next time I went, I looked again just to see, you know, I was curious and it was there again. So something, whether it was a person or a beast, I don't know, something with hands had been taking that rock, you know, and using it to freak people. I don't know if it was throwing it to get people's attention. I don't know if it was a prank. I don't know what it was, but the rock was there, then it was gone, and then it was back again with weeks because I would go probably every one to two weeks so that was a bizarre bizarre situation um but you know I had no proof of what it was one way or the other well the end of 2019 my lease came up at my last uh, residence and oddly enough I found a residence in the original neighborhood that I was going to um, uh, t that I wanted to live in when I initially moved to Arkansas. So here I am, uh, I've got my keys in hand. I'm scoping it out and the first thing that caught me as I was checking out my new place was this view that was just amazing. It looked out over the forest because I'm situated up high so I can see overall the the lower scrub brush which really when I say lower I would say at the lowest point most of that scrub brush is around seven feet tall eight feet tall maybe um, but I am up so high to where I can really see out and into the forest I moved in the end of December 2019 so all the deciduous trees had lost I mean all their leaves were gone by that time the only thing that was green was a lot of that that brush and I'm, I'm thinking that it's a, a type of laurel I'm not sure but it's obviously an evergreen because it basically the majority of it stayed green throughout the winter and then of course you know as the spring came all the trees filled in with the regular leaves but uh, I remember looking out going, wow. And it's just truly beautiful. I have all these birds, all this wildlife. So those first two days were basically just a blur. Christmas Eve, December 24th, the neighborhood was really, really quiet. People were leaving. You could hear like kids and people kind of getting in their cars going to wherever they were going for that holiday. And I made myself a, a thing of coffee and I just went and sat out on my balcony overlooking the forest and I'm thinking wow it's just so beautiful and as I'm sitting out on my balcony um, 
I heard voices and I couldn't understand what they were saying. And at first I thought it was coming from one of the residences, but it was actually, it sounded like it was right in the wood line, like right below me. And so I immediately thought, oh, there's somebody out walking in the woods because it was just kind of hard to place what they were saying. I, I couldn't quite tell. And I'm watching the wood line and I keep expecting that I'm gonna see somebody walking out from there because I could hear them talking. But, and, and, and for it to be as close as it was, I should have been able to understand what was being said, but it, it just, I don't know, it was like words, but it, it's hard to explain. I just, I don't know, I kind of wrote it off, but it was, it just didn't seem normal. And all of a sudden, like I'm just kind of looking down, just, just taking it all in because it was all new to me. And even now, like I'm looking out there right now as I'm filming this and I'm thinking, it's just so beautiful. I feel like I'm up in a tree house and I'm, I'm just truly blessed to be here. But that moment, as I'm drinking my coffee and I'm just kind of looking along, I wasn't staring in one particular place. I was just kind of like scanning along and I think I was still kind of looking to see if there was somebody out there, you know, because it was a little unnerving right behind my house and, and I just, I wasn't sure what to think. And, but still nobody came out. But then as I'm scanning along and I saw a face and, and I, I immediately went back to the spot that I, I saw the face and it wasn't there anymore. Because I was so tired and so stressed, I, I really questioned myself. I wondered if I was seeing things, um, but it, it, was look, it was like just looking up at me. And it was, it was very, it was oval shape and it had like hair around the perimeter, but the face was very smooth and it was, it was almost like a color of a male lion that kind of um, somewhere between the camel and a cinnamon color. It was really interesting, but it wasn't really big. It was smaller. And if I had to guess now, knowing the height of that brush down there, it had to have been maybe a little shorter than me. I don't know, but it was like kind of looking up through the bush at me but it was only there for like I said a split second because you know you look and you see it and you're like what what did I just see and you go back and you look and it's not there anymore so I don't know I was just wondering because your mind can play tricks on you and I've looked up things online about people who hallucinate <laughs> because you do you start questioning things and uh, hallucinations are very real so at first I kind of thought I was just seeing things my mind was playing tricks on me so I'm sitting there and I you know continue drinking my coffee and all of a sudden I heard something again it was like a voice that was off in the forest it sounded like it was off in the forest but again I I questioned on whether or not the the sound might have been coming from somewhere else and maybe bouncing off the forest um, but it, it and I'm gonna try to imitate it because it was really bizarre but it, it was the word hello but it wasn't normal. It it went, hello, hello. <laughs> You're going to think I'm nuts. I know. But it's a hello. And it was somewhere between <laughs> someone saying hello and a dog howling. It was really weird. And at first I thought it was a kid playing around because I wasn't used to the sounds of my neighborhood yet and my neighbors. And I thought it was a kid, but it, so it did it a couple times and I'm like listening really hard to see, you know, if I can di like tell where it's coming from. But what was really strange was it, it got further away. Each time I heard the hello, <laughs> it was deeper into the forest. And that made me just shake my head going, what the, you know, WTF on that one. I mean, what was that? That was weird. And then it just stopped and I didn't hear it. I mean, it got further, further, further away. And then it, it just, I didn't hear it anymore. But I, I sat out there and everything else was pretty quiet. Like I could hear the, 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 cause there's a highway not too far off and I could hear, you know, every once in a while I hear a car off in the distance go by and I might hear like you'd hear people like car doors closing, people getting ready to leave or whatever. But I just sat there and I listened to see if it was sounds coming off of, you know, my neighbor's places and
I don't know. I mean, after the last hello, <laughs> kind of makes me think of that episode of Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, anyways, that, that's a whole nother story. For those Seinfeld out, fans out there, you know what I'm talking about. But the hello, uh, but it was somewhere, like I said, somewhere between, uh, I don't know, somebody just kind of playing around and a dog howling. It was, it was a very weird, it almost sounded like somebody imitating something. I don't know, I can't explain it, but that's where this saga started, and it proceeded to get more and more interesting from there. I want to say it was the end of the first week of January when I had my first sighting, and I I thought, it, again, you always question your sanity. I thought I was seeing things. That I immediately got on the phone. I was hanging up window dressings in my bedroom and I was looking off into just the forest because I was right there at the window. It's like hard not to, especially when you're up so high and you have this type of a view. And I saw something standing there and it, it was like a brownish, lightish cinnamon, kind of tannish color. And and I made the connection with the face that I had seen, but it was what I had seen was so much smaller than what this because this was quite a ways off and I immediately thought it might be a tree and that you know I just started rationalizing um, but I got on the phone and I called my daughter in Santa Monica and I told her oh my goodness you know because I explained to her what had happened previously and um, you know of course she knew about my camping situation uh, back in Big Basin and she just <laughs> immediately went to that place where mom's nuts and now she's seeing things she's living on the you know by the forest and of course now she's seen Sasquatch or Bigfoot or whatever you want to call them and um, so I get on the phone with her and I told her I said I'm looking at her right now and she said you know mom you need to get your you need to get a camera and have it handy for when this happens so that you can start documenting it for if for no other reason for your own peace of mind and I thought to myself she's absolutely right so we hung up I don't have a regular camera the zoom on my iPhone didn't go that far so it didn't really help me out so I thought okay uh, you know there's something standing right there and I can't even take a really decent picture of it which goes back to the naysayers out there that are always harassing these people who have had sightings saying that well if you're actually seeing a sasquatch why don't you take a picture of them well it is not that easy in fact since that time i discovered a zoom lens on the instagram um, application where i realized i could really zoom in a far away so that's when I really started capturing videos and I found that it's much easier to capture uh, any type of animal with a video rather than a photo. Photos, um, it's going to be blurry, especially if they're covered in fur and are moving in and out of leaves. And these particular creatures are, I mean, it's hard enough to get photos even of deer. I, I even had my camera ready and it's hard enough to get a, capture a video of deer, let alone a creature that is a master of camouflage that is going to great lengths to avoid you. And the interesting thing about these creatures is they are incredible at camouflage and they blend so well. In fact, unless you know, it took me months to really recognize what I was, I would just get out my camera, I would just start filming. 15 second segment videos of things that I have seen out in the forest of these creatures. And some of them are very clear and easy to see what they are. But some of them, when I first filmed them, I knew something was out there, but I wasn't good enough at spotting what it actually was yet. So when I was looking back, now that I've had a little bit more experience and I'm getting better at sighting these things um, and differentiating between the various faces because they tend to group together and sometimes it's hard to tell where one of them leaves off and the other one begins. Uh, but we'll get more into that later and I want to share these photos and videos with you. It's really interesting. That was the other thing I was a little worried about is that what if people do take me serious and what if 
I mean, you hear about all these government <laughs> conspiracies because they're, they're there and it's so obvious when you're in a space where they frequent and it's almost impossible not to notice them. So the fact that the government claims that they don't exist or won't recognize that they exist makes me wonder why. As much as I want to share this with y'all, I really want to be careful as well. So that's the beginning of my story. We're going to get in. I don't want to make this video too long, but my next one, we're going to get into um, the sightings as I started really um, viewing it because I had a couple, once I saw my first one, I had a couple weeks before I had to start school again. And like I said, all the tree, the trees were bare for the most part with the exception of like the laurel and the, the various evergreens. And then as spring came, you know, things changed and I have seen adults. I have seen what I can only considered tweens <laughs> for a lack of a better word um, I have seen babies I have seen very small ones that I could only maybe kind of equate with maybe toddlers or um, like maybe elementary school version of the Sasquatch I don't know it's it's really bizarre one night I was sitting outside and I heard something a commotion in the brush and I saw one scampering back and forth but it happened so fast but um, yeah it's really interesting so my next video make sure that you subscribe and hit those uh, notification buttons so that when it comes out you won't miss it because I'm going to try very hard to post at least one Sasquatch video a week. I'm really shooting for two videos a week to cover the other subjects that I want to talk about, um, but also to make sure that I can stay on, on track with this topic and um, just share the various photos and videos and information because it's really interesting and the more you observe them, the more you start realizing that um, there is nothing quite like them. Uh, I have seen some that I can only describe it like, I don't know. And it also, um, you know, because you hear stories about like the dogmen and things like that, and people think that they're a different creature. But from what I have seen, they are just another variation of the Sasquatch, and they all they they all commune together so um, usually if you see one there could be upwards of anywhere from six to I know you're not gonna believe me but upwards of 20 possibly more and they rotate out and like during major storms um, sometimes I will see them if they're in the area they all just kind of huddle together the big ones protect the small ones it's just fascinating and that also flies in the face of the whole uh their interdimensional beings and i don't know we'll get into that a little bit more on what i think could possibly be the case with the whole paranormal side of it um but all i can say is that from what i've seen because we get some we had a really cold freezing rainstorm uh, this one point in time when they were in the area and um, I saw these really large ones move in and they they kind of form it's almost like they dog pile and the larger ones protect the small ones and they like that scrub and I think this is why they there are so many of them in East Texas in the uh, big thicket because there is so much coverage for them and on um, this particular area where I live there's a lot of coverage that they can mask themselves with and sometimes it's actually easier to see them with the naked eye i've gone so far as to uh i purchased a telephoto lens but it it happened it helped me with one sighting that i had um but most of the time the closer you zoom in you just get a bunch of leaves it's when you really like zoom out and you look at it as a whole where you can see the face so you can see what's be just behind because there's not a lot of leaves but when they're behind it they blend so well with it that it's hard to tell especially zoomed in where the leaves end and the, the sasquatch begins 
but when you look at it as the bigger picture as a whole you can see the face you can see the eyes and I will wait to see and it's interesting because I know it's them because I see the various faces that I've come to get used to who's who and they have a unique each one of them has a very unique face and they're individuals I mean just like you or I so I I really want to get into this I don't want to like I said I don't want to babble on too much today so thank you so much for joining me today um, I look forward to our future videos together uh, I really want to share this with you I also am very interested if you have had any Sasquatch experiences whether it's a sighting um, you know a, a similar experience camping like what I had where you you have all these components to it other than actually a visual of them I mean because every single component was there during that night except the visual and and I can't help but think that had I looked out of that tent I would have seen one standing there but that is just a little too close for comfort it's one thing when you are 30 feet up and viewing them from a distance versus them on the outside of your very very thin <laughs> nylon tent so let me know what you think also if you are enjoying this video and you want to know more about this give it a big thumbs up i'll get going on the next one so that we can keep this ball rolling and discover this and i want to have discussions on what you think it is because especially if you have seen something and you've got a good good clear um, visual of the face and the height i mean some of them are huge i found footprints out in the grass that are just enormous and i'm thinking when are they out there i mean i've sat up late nights waiting for them and i think they are just so in tune they are so in tune with their surroundings they know when it's safe to come out so i mean the uh, anyway so <laughs> thank you for watching I uh, love all y'all and I do appreciate each and every one of my subscribers. Like I said, I have a very small group going right now. I hope to continue to grow it so that we can have a lot of fun together and I can learn from you. And I want feedback on my videos. I want to know what you like, what you don't like, uh, what you'd like to hear more about. Maybe if you have a question about this that I'm not covering and it's something that I do know about or that we can kind of um, discuss and and get into more into depth about i really want to hear from you so thank you again for watching again subscribe hit all your notifications so you don't miss any of my videos give it a big thumbs up if you like it love all y'all mm, thank you so much for watching bye and i'll see you next time